Okay, moving on to the next segment of today's show, and this is going to be a segment that we've really been wanting to talk about for a while, and that was the New York Jets and their brutal, brutal defeat on Sunday to the Las Vegas Raiders as the Raiders came into MetLife Stadium, and for the first three quarters and change, we actually thought the Jets had a chance to win this game. We thought they played pretty well, but ultimately, in the end, it wasn't to be. So Andrew and I are both big Jet fans. That's really how we started talking football together, and we really value each other's opinions. So Andrew, I'll let you start it off, man. When you saw Henry Ruggs make that touchdown the other day and he burns Lamar Jackson on that double move, what are you thinking? Well, man, I was just so pissed off in the moment. But, you know, like, after having a few days off, I realized, pro, that's probably the best position for us, to be honest, because, you know what, I mean, you've been sending me some uh, clips of Trevor Lawrence, and I I'm excited for this kid. I hope we get the number one pick. And um, it looks like we're going to lose against the Seahawks, especially with Mims out. But, um, man, I just don't like that play call at all. Like, if you're trying to win, that's not the right play call. I think we can all agree on that. Definitely terrible to put a, un -rookie, a rookie free agent on there. Um, but with cooler heads right now, I think it's a good it's a good move for the franchise as a future. Um, I have nothing else to say, but it was just a terrible play call, and Greg Williams deserves to be fired. Well, here's my thing, man. I totally agree with you that yeah. Greg Williams deserved to be fired. And here's the first question we'll address, and I don't know where you stand on this, but we have uh, we obviously know there are a lot of people, a lot of Jet fans out there saying Greg Williams and the team purposely tanked and we they didn't want to win the game and that's why they sent that blitz and that's why they made the play call. But as you're shaking your head, I totally agree because number one, <coughs> excuse me, Greg Williams got fired the next day. So if he really, really wanted to keep his job, he would have just done what the owner said and ultimately he didn't do that. He loses his job. When you look at Greg Williams and the history uh, of all of the teams he's been on to prior to this New York Jet team, he's known for being super aggressive, really being known to blitz. And at the same time, I just don't think that the New York Jets would decide uh, to tank the game on the last play as opposed to on all the turnovers they forced and all of the different opportunities they had to win the game. And I do agree with you when you say, look, at the moment, it was horrible. When we're watching the Jets, right, it's very hard for us to root against the team blatantly, even though we both realize that it's the best thing for the organization and the future. But at the same time, when you watch that game, I'll tell you this, man, I'm sure you were sitting in the same boat as me. We didn't want to go 0-16. If we get the number one pick, fine, but we would just want to come to the field ready to play each and every week. And ultimately, so far this season, that really hasn't happened much. Now, there were some positives from the game, but ultimately, my first question is, if you want to fire Greg Williams, that's fine. But Adam Gaze ultimately is the one responsible for everything. I don't care that Greg Williams is the defensive coordinator. Adam Gaze should have known to block that call and prevent it from happening. And I don't know if Andrew, if you saw the report, but apparently what happened was he was on the sideline talking to someone else. I'm not exactly sure who it was. And then all of a sudden he hears cover zero, cover zero out of the back of his ear. He turns around to try to stop it because he knew something was up. And then before you know it, Henry Ruggs is in the end zone. So as a head coach, you have to take responsibility for that. And that's just unacceptable. Yeah, it's totally, and it just shows another reason why Adam Gase is just not meant for a, a head coaching job. He just doesn't have. He, he, I mean, come on, you can't you can't be focusing on talking to someone right now unless it, someone's dying, man. Like literally, you have to focus on the play call. You're the head coach. Everything needs to go to you, even the defensive calls. And it just shows that he would be better as an offensive coordinator. I'm not even saying he's a good offensive coordinator, but he's not even meant to be a head coach with that call. Um, and the thing I have to say is just quite hypocritical of the Jets is, yes, Greg Mil Williams made a terrible play call, but Adam Gates for the last two years have been making terrible play calls and every third and long calling a screen pass with Sam Darnold or Joe Flacco or Trevor Simeon. And my question is, I, I, I understand why he's not being fired now. It's because, I don't know, I, I really don't, but I feel like it's just because of the tank. But it's just, uh, you just said it right out there, man. He, he just could, he, he wasn't even paying attention to the play call in the last play. And that's all on him as well. He should have been calling a timeout. And if he really wanted to even have any chance of establishing credibility, that was the time to make it. And it just shows, again, why he's not ready for coaching material at all. Well, here's my question for you. So we see that Greg Williams gets fired. I think that the question of whose decision was it to fire Greg Williams is very important. Because it's one of three people. It could be Christopher Johnson, the owner of the team that we know earlier this season came out there and said, 
Adam Gaze is an offensive genius. He gave him that bow to confidence. Obviously, that hasn't worked out. But Christopher Johnson could have just watched that game and said, all right, unacceptable. That guy needs to go. It could have been Joe Douglas, the general manager, who he knows that everything is on the line for him this season, and he wants to see this team do well. And maybe he was just really upset with that call. I know he doesn't want to see the team go 0-16. Or it could have been Adam Gaze, the head coach. And we know earlier in the season, Adam Gaze and Greg Williams had a little bit of beef uh, talking to the media, stuff like that. But at the same time, I do think that if it was Adam Gaze's decision to fire Greg Williams and he just purposely went up to Christopher Johnson and was like, look, this guy's got to go. I really just hope um, Christopher Johnson doesn't take that those words from Adam Gaze and just still really value his opinion so much. And that's why they decided to fire Greg Williams. Because as you said, even though the Greg Williams play call was horrible, Adam Gase has made plenty of horrible calls over the past two years. And this team just doesn't come ready to play each and every week. Any level of professional football team could have made a stop on that Ruggs play, especially just known not to make that uh, uh, cover uh, cover zero call. So I, yeah. I, it sucks. No. You're right, and um, I, I, that's what I'm afraid of as well. I hope he gets booted this season. I hope Christopher Johnson isn't on any drugs because that would just be a very terrible mindset to go with. And I hope he's learning because look at this. This is exactly what happened with Mike McCagney in a way. You let, you're let you about to fire the guy, but you let him make an important decision. I, I, I know that Greg Williams is going to be fired either way, but just that idea of him having some power, even though he, I hope he's on his way out, it's just alarming. And and when Adam Gay said it was his decision, and he just, I mean, he got the kudos from both of the other guys. Like, I just still, I, I was very shocked because why is this guy who's about to be booted had this much power? And um, I, I really hope, and I, I really, my, my nightmare scenario is that he comes on as coach next year and he blames it all on the, the GM. And and that's something I got to say as well, Zach. I, I don't know if you know this, but you know, like, um, G, uh, Do, Joe Douglas and Adam Gase both report to Christopher Johnson separately it's not a hierarchy right here and the thing is is maybe adam gase is like giving some thoughts to christopher johnson saying he doesn't have the pieces around him or the talent to win and that's why his team's doing so poorly and it's not his coaching and and i hope that's not the case but I, i've heard those reports um have you as well because you know i don't like that style of um, hierarchy you know yeah definitely and i like how, when you said oh we could kind of learn from what happened with mike mccagden i do think that the jets or Adam Gaze was really set up in a position to fail by his own doings based on the trajectory of events that happened right before the 2019 draft when the Jets fired Mike McCagnin following their big, one of their bigger off seasons in team history and they fired him after he made all those decisions because of Adam Gaze and this quote-unquote power struggle and I will say in the past a lot of people I've been listening to a lot of shows a lot of podcasts and they've been saying Oh, you know, Adam Gaze, uh, he he, uh, he could be back because uh, Christopher Johnson, as an owner, he doesn't necessarily care about football. If Adam Gaze is his guy, he'll bring him back. But at the same time, like, if you watch this Jet team this season, they're Owen, and they go 0 16, 1 15, whatever. I just don't understand how you could sell to your fan base we're bringing this guy back. And as loyal as Jet fans are, I do think that at that point, Christopher Johnson just has to realize look, we have to be honest with ourselves. This just isn't working out. We're going to have, hopefully, a chance to draft a quarterback that could be really, really special. And when you look at some of the other teams around the NFL, we talk about the Kansas City Chiefs all the time and how dynamic they are. We see Justin Herbert with the Chargers and how much he's popped to start his NFL career. And I believe that coaching is a big problem with that Charger team, not really the quarterback play. I do think that Christopher Johnson has to look at that situation as a whole thing and say, look, if we want to succeed, we need to clean house. We need to find a new coach. We need to find a guy that is willing to work with the quarterback and make him better. I know you saw that Adam Gase press conference the other day talking about how he needs to do a better job with Sam Darnold and his development, and he took blame for it. The way I saw it, and this was even before the game against the Raiders, he looked like a guy dead in the water, and maybe if the Jets really just want to secure the tank, that's the only reason why they're keeping him, in, keeping him around. But then at the same time also, why would they fire Greg Williams for doing the same thing? Yeah, I know. I, I just want to say uh, one thing is, like, even if they do fire Adam Gase, I don't think there's anyone that... Uh, the thing is, is with the head coach, like, there's no one that's going to re replace him that really makes sense and that's going to do anything right now. Um, so, you know what? I think they're just going to let him ride out. And, you know, after Christopher Johnson made those remarks about him being an offensive guru, like, it just puts you in a bad spot as an owner to just fire someone. And even though, you know, I, I think there's just four more weeks and we're just going to have to let it ride out and just hope that, you know... 
our the owners of the Jets have a good brain, man. I mean, look, we got building blocks. That last game, I'm not saying that it was a terrible thing. Look at Mekhi Becton, man. He, he made so many holes. I think he counted for 105 yards of rushing when they ran to the left side, uh, far left side. And you got Quinn and Williams. And I hope we could have some time to talk about those players because there's a lot of bright spots. Even if we lost, there, there's a lot of uh, things to build on in the future. So, uh, yeah, I, I want to hear your thoughts, Zach, about, like, you know, what do you think? What were the most impressive things from the Jets this week? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so one thing I definitely will say is a lot of times over the past eight, ten years as Jet fans, since we've had since Rex Ryan has walked away as the head coach, is that I feel like the Jets, when you compare them to some of the other teams around the league, not only are they not as good, but they're not as dynamic scheme wise, and they're not as powerful offensively. They don't necessarily pop. And I feel like over the last couple of years of following the NFL, really since I've started doing this podcast, I've really been able to learn how exactly successful teams are built. And the one thing I will say is that when you uh, succeed with the draft, that's how you be- you get better easily and quicker. And I do think this year, Joe Douglas, in his first draft, did a pretty solid job bringing in um, Makai Becton with the first round pick. That looks like a pretty solid pick right now. I agree with you. I love the way he's been able to play. He's had a little bit of a trouble staying on the field, but he's a rookie. It happens in a COVID season. Hopefully he'll be healthy uh, going forward, but I really like what I've seen so far. Denzel Mim, same thing. I really like the value we got him in the second round, but at the same time, it didn't it didn't really help that he was out the first seven weeks of the season, and we're watching each and every game, our quarterback, whoever it is, have absolutely no chance to succeed. And I do think with Mims out there, he's healthy, and he looks like a legitimate player, and I do think it's been a while since the Jets have drafted and really developed a skill position player well when you combine him and Pirine. I know him also, another guy that's had some trouble staying on the field, um, plus some of the other guys on defense. I'm not saying there are a lot of impact makers, but I think there are guys that could ultimately find a role, and I just think it starts off with the draft. That's what we got to do. Yeah, you're totally right about that, and I, I like Joe Douglas's draft, this last draft. I mean, he we found a, a few starters, and um, I, I mean, Bryce Hall was in the sixth or seventh round, and he looks pretty good. Um, Ashton, Ashton Davis, Davis, yeah. Davis, I mean, you saw him lay the boom on Cam Newton one time. He's got some skill. The kid um, uh, Zaniga, he hasn't played much yet, but you know if if he's on the field, we'll see what he could do. Yeah, yeah, I hope to see him in the next four weeks. Let's see what he got. And um, yeah, man, I mean, look, he drafted basically a pro, a top five left tackle right now. I mean, he's playing like a top five left tackle in the league, and you can't ask for more than that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited with the next uh, this ne- upcoming draft. I'm excited to see what Joe Douglas can do in the first two rounds. We're gonna have. Five and if we trade Darnold, maybe six top fifty picks, and it's just gonna be it's gonna be interesting, you know. I, I like the Trevor Lawrence, and I, I like the team we're we're building in, and um, and I can't complain about Joe Douglas. I, I know we're we're really bad right now, but we have about we have four possible Pro Bowlers. Yeah, I mean, and we're taking we're taking the wounds. And one other thing I'll say when you look at the Jets and compare them to some of the other teams in the league. I will say, like, right now, if you ask me, like, what team would you rather be, the Jets or the Eagles, we're going to say the Jets because we have kind of that light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully. Hopefully we get that number one overall pick, and maybe for the first time in a while we have a GM that's really willing to build a team the right way and draft well. And I'm not saying that's definitely happening, but so far, so good. When you look at some of the other teams in the past couple years that have really struggled, whether it was to start the season like the Miami Dolphins did last year, they really were able to turn it around quickly because of a great head coaching hire they made. The Cincinnati Bengals, we don't really know what exactly Zach Taylor was as a head coach, but I would make the argument that the Cincinnati Bengals last year were just as bad as the Jets are right now. They bring in Joe Burrow, and they're not great, but you could see immediately there is hope, and there is a chance that he could be really good really soon. Hopefully, he'll be healthy, and that's one thing I think the Jets got to go by, man. Keep building the offensive line. I think Becton is a great start, but in the draft, those are, that's what we got to attack. We got to get a quarterback, and and also, dude, we have to give Trevor Lawrence a real chance to succeed if he's ending up being the guy. Because here's the deal. Me and you have said this all the time. Sam Darnold, he hasn't been great this season. We're not going to deny that. But it's not like he just forgot how to play football. He showed flashes his rookie year. He even showed flashes last year. And the problem is, I think if you put him on a real legitimate team, he could be a big player, kind of like Carson Wentz. I think they're very similar players. I think if they're given a new opportunity and a new scene, maybe they could succeed. But the bottom line is, since Sam Darnold was drafted, Adam Gase has failed him, and really the whole organization has as well. Yeah, absolutely, Zach. And uh, 
I mean, look, the most important thing besides Trevor Lawrence is that coach. And, you know, me and you have been talking about how important a coach is. Look at Joe Judge and the New York Giants, how he just completely changed the culture. So I'm hoping for a very good coach that's going to be able to connect with all the players and retain free agents. Because you know what, man? Adam Gase was a big reason for Jamal Adams' departure. That toxic culture, the not caring about the defense, it just caused a lot of rifts. And we need a coach that really is a leader for the whole locker room. So that's also going to be important as well coming up. Yeah, so uh, for the next four games of the season, what exactly are you looking for with this Jet team? Because for me, I want to see this defense just keep getting better. Most likely in the secondary, you said it. Bryce Hall and Ashton Davis are two kids that have been playing pretty well lately. Also, next year, one thing I'll say, we'll hopefully get C.J. Mosley back. Hopefully get yeah. Blake Cashman back. Hopefully the defense will be a little more healthy. It's really a good sign to see Quinn and Williams finally evolving into the player that we hopefully thought he could be. And I'm telling you, man, I just think with the right coach, I don't think this team is that far away. Because I, I'm i telling you, at the, a big part of why we're 0-16 right now is just Adam Gaze. Whether it's the locker room quitting on him, whether it's just dumb play call after dumb play call, it was never realistic for this guy to be brought in here. And as times went on, especially going into this season, this team just trajectory got worse and worse and worse. And it's just really unfortunate because it doesn't seem like that long ago where the Jets signed Le'Veon Bell, we signed C.J. Mosley, we had Jamal Adams, and we really were optimistic. No, yeah, no doubt. And uh, to just add on to that for the final four games, um, I really just want to see more of, yeah, I just want to see the guys progress. I want to see Quill, Quinn and Williams continue to just dominate because he's becoming he's becoming a Pro Bowl player, and, and I like to see that. Um, I just also want to see some of the secondary guys like Forley, Fatuzaki, and um, John Franklin Myers. They've been having very good seasons, and no one's been really talking about them. They've been having very good pro football grades. And uh, Franklin Myers is a possible edge rusher. Uh, we'll see about that. I think we need to address that in for agency. Um, and I just want to see – I also want to see us – unfortunately, I want to see us lose, but I want to see us – I want to see Sam Darnold do good because I like the kid, man. I don't care if he goes to another team. I like the kid, and he was our he was our guy. And we, we didn't give him a chance to succeed, you know. It, it sucks. But he's a good kid. And you listen to him on the radio, he's he's definitely a good leader, man. He doesn't blame it on anyone except himself. And I want him to succeed. And I, I hope we can get a better pick for him. You know, maybe we can snag a first if he shows a lot of good flashes. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's my goal. And um, I just hope that no one gets serious injuries. Like, I, I don't want to see anyone get torn ACL these last four games. And, yeah. Uh, just, just, see, just see the young guys improve. Let's see if Bryce Hall is a starter. I don't know about Lamar Jackson. And um, on the offensive side, just I, I love to see Betson, man. He's like one of the only reasons I watch the offense anymore. Just him dominating the ed ends, you know? Yeah, one thing I'll also say is when we watch your Justin Herberts and your Joe Burrows and even your Josh Allen on Monday Night Football uh, the other night, those quarterbacks are instantly popping. And when we watch... I could just tell ultimately, like right away, oh, this kid, Justin Herbert, he's going to be a player. Same with Joe Burrow. And I think as a Jet fan, when you look at this division, right, we have Josh Allen in Buffalo. The way things are going there, he's going to be there for a long time and be pretty good. You have Brian Flores and what he's building in Miami. We don't necessarily know if two is the overall answer, but he has looked good at times and the Dolphins are a well-coached team. You have Bill Belichick with the Patriots. So I think as Jet fans, we kind of need to find that combo of a Sean Payton and a Drew Brees or a Brady and a Belichick or even a Sean McVay and a Jared Goff to just develop as time goes on. And I do think... We remember it was only two two seasons ago when the Jets hired Adam Gaze. We were very nervous about the coaching search. I've told you the guy I want is Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator of the Carolina Panthers. What he was able to do with the Saints to start off his coaching career, then goes to LSU, wins a national championship there with Joe Burrow, and he had a phenomenal season. And then this year in Carolina, he, along with Matt Rule, are turning Teddy Bridgewater into a very good quarterback and a very dynamic offense. And I think if you put, you see also in Kansas City, dude, you put a general uh, generational talent like Patrick Mahomes with a generational coach like Andy Reid with generational talent around them that's what happens and I think Trevor Lawrence is the first step to that yeah for sure man I love the Joe Brady idea it's grown on me I like the enemy um maybe we can go the college route but I don't I don't really think that's the right route for us I think we should get an established guy that's proven himself in the NFL and uh yeah man I mean look we got building blocks Mims and uh Becton and I, I I mean look man we could sign someone we could draft another wide wide out I think we have a really good wide, uh, you know, group of three guys at Perriman Lees with Mims, Crowder, and uh, the X. Um, and uh, you know what? Maybe snag up that tight end you said, um, you know, Pitt. Um, oh, yeah, Kyle Pitts from Florida. I'd yeah, love to see him there. 
him, you know, build that, get the skill players like, you know, Casey's been doing. And yeah, man, I mean, look, I think we can be competitive next year if we get Lawrence. Um, I really do, man. We're going to, I, I see a good future. I like the direction we're going in because at least we have a direction. You know? Yeah, exactly. We could be a team like Philadelphia where we have, a uh, you know, a situation where we're paying a quarterback just way too much money just sitting there on the bench, which we obviously don't want to happen. So at least there hopefully will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Anything else yeah. to add? Yeah, um, no, I'm pretty good, but uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. You know, as a Jet fan, we got to have the hope, you know, man? For sure, for sure. So we'll be moving on to the next segment coming up.